Think about it like this, right? If we were to set it up as a practical operation, if you were to go out tomorrow and set up, and somebody gave you a manufacturing operation to run, right? How would you run it? And this is the real application in some sense of the TOC five focusing step, is that if you had a constraint at C, the touch time, so let me ask you a question. What is the difference between project and production? Can you look? Can you tell by looking at the diagram whether it is a project or production? If somebody draws you boxes and arrows, can you tell it is a project or production? If, if, there's a, if there's a customer involved, like at what stage the customer is involved, and we can we can take a little bit of idea about like uh, whether it's like a service for service. Some of the most of the service like you go to work as a tool for. Like, you go in service if they have to the contact you usually, but it work, you create one product and then sell it uh, to the customer. It's the same for manufacturing. You go to a machine shop, they don't have anything. Yeah, I mean, some, some have like consulting and all or some uh, uh, subscribe-based softwares, like they used to, you subscribe to them and then keep on in touch with those people and that's something you use. use. Let me tell you my understanding, yeah. right? In production or in manufacturing, a lot of time, the touch time to lead time is very, very small. The machine will process this for like 30 seconds, but the queue time in front of the machine is going to be like two hours. So the lead time is almost like one is to seven, one is to 10 touch time to lead time. In projects, you'll find it's very different. In projects, you will find the touch time is very high. A software engineer will code for three days, right? And give a duration of six days, right? So this is the basic, basic difference between production and project when you think about it, right? When you look at it from picture perspective, you draw boxes, they look the same, right? In this case, if it is a production environment, you know this is the touch time of A and B are very small. You don't really have to bother about how long do I have to manage this time. No, you don't have to. So all of this time between here, A and C, can be just treated as buffer. So now, with this knowledge, the touch time knowledge, how can you set up the system for manufacturing? You have C, that is the constraint, and everybody is following C. That means C has a drum beat that it is marching to. Everybody is following, that means the material release is happening based on what the drum beat is to satisfy the buffer, right? It's a very simple rule that you can set up, right? Now, in this case, if, if our end, end was the constraint, this whole thing would have been buffer. In this case, now we start to differentiate and call something, and I'm going to introduce one term called rope. Rope is when do I release something? This is a subordination thing, right? When do I release something? Now, when, I, when C, and, and I'm kind of trying to enact this, when C is like marching to a drum beat, I go back a certain time frame and say this is what my rope is and I release material with that. So let's say we decide the touch time is just 10 minutes and we let's do 10 times of that touch time and it's still good enough, right? We'll do 100 minutes. So that is the rope length. So I will release 100 minutes before when C is supposed to process. So now we have two terms, drum, we have a rope, when to release. Now we know that there is uncertainty, customer is involved, we may sometimes miss it, sometimes not miss it, we want to be sure. And that is where to deal with that uncertainty we may add some buffer. Right? This is where the concept of these three things come, drum, buffer and rope. Together all this thing 
gives us a practical mechanism to operate a shop floor. 